Welcome to the What You Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori Amin, will interview published authors to chat about their work, journey to getting published, and their book recommendations. If you share a passion for books and are always looking for your next read, then join us. Welcome to the What You Next podcast. Hi, Sky. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you, Laura. Hi. Yes. Thank you so much for having us. So happy to have you both. So tell us who you are. Let's go with Sarah first and then Sky. Yeah, I am Sarah Smith. I am the Sarah part of Sarah Sky. <laughs> and I am a romance author also on my own of the books um, Faker, If You Never Come Back, Simmer Down, and the soon to be released way, way out there <laughs> on location. <laughs> I love this. Hi, Sky. So tell us about who you are. Hi, yeah, I'm Sky McDonald. I am the Sky part of Sarah Sky and the other half of the Quick and Dirty Romance podcast. And I'm the author of the Anti Bell series that's not suitable for work, off the record, and Nemesis, all three contemporary romances set in my hometown of Nashville. So, yeah, I'm just so excited about all of this. I love this. So, how did you two meet? Because you've been, you get, you've known each other for some time. You have a podcast, you write them together. So, Tell us how did you, was me cute? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Sky? I actually like I know. So we met on Twitter, but I yep, went yep. back to our DMs together to see like with the very first time that we DM'd each other, and I saw that I was the one to DM you first in February of 2018 because um, you were looking for like a beta reader for I think it was not suitable for work, mm-hmm. and I was like, hey, I'll read it if you need. <laughs> I remember that. I don't, uh, I sh- you slid into my DMs. Look at you. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do remember putting out that call and that was, but I mean, we had like bantered on, you know, all the Twitter threads as one does, uh, before that, like we were familiar with each other and had been, you know, tagging each other and boosting each other as we'd gone along. But I definitely remember that it was beta reading, not suitable for work. Cause like, I think I gave you like the opening chapters and just your feedback was gold. It was like exactly what I was looking for, um, both positive and critiquing. Um, so yeah, that was definitely the start of it all. <laughs> I love this. And let's talk about the podcast. How did you come up with the podcast and what do you, what, what should listeners expect from listening to the podcast? Well, I think, see, the thing is it started as this critique partner relationship and like Sarah I I got to read Faker and that was great and all along we had kind of followed each other and boosted each other as we had gone through publishing and then our books came out very close together Mm -hmm. um and we met up in Nashville and I think it was Nashville Sarah that we were like you know I mean I think it would be cool to do a podcast we should do it and so about a month or so later we just started doing it am I right is that how that went down yeah, I feel like that was about how that started. Yeah, I think also, I think we were both like, <laughs> we're waiting or we're tired of waiting for people to like get back to us. I'm like, oh yeah, we want you to do this. We want you to do that. I'm like, you know what? Screw that. Like we both, we both get shit done when we want to. <laughs> so let's make our own <laughs> podcast. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I remember like I had gotten, Laura, I think, I think, yeah, I can't remember when you and I first talked, but I remember it was after Not Suitable for Work. But yeah, there were so many different, like we were looking for marketing, but we also had a lot to say about just like the life of a romance writer, right? And like what that's about. So yeah, we just made it happen. I love this. I love you all came around the same time because you messaged, Sky, you messaged me and I said, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not taking arcs. And then Mm -hmm. your book came up and Sarah mentioned your book in the podcast. And I auto and I pre-order, even though it was coming on Kindle Limited, I was like, shit, she tells me that this is the book I need to read. I'm going to pre-order and read it. And then I realized I went back to my emails and I was like, oh, that guy mm-hmm. emailed me about the book. So it all comes full circle. I remember that because I remember I had emailed you and you had been full up. And then you did get back to me saying I had Sarah Smith on and she wrecked your book and... So I read it and I was like, awesome, (laughs) because Sarah is like the best cheerleader. Um, She has always, always been in my corner for all of this. I would not, this journey would not have been half as much fun or half as much light and just like joy without you. So 
Yes. Yes. So Sarah, you, you wrecked my book and I got to meet Laura and was terribly honored to be able to do that as well. Yeah. And then you guys joined Frolic and then you helped me get into Frolic. So we, we worked together, you know, in yes. this journey, you know, for, shout out to Frolic, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, I think it's been awesome just to like all these random connections that all came together, you know. I know. And Laura, we got to have drinks together in New York City when we were both New York ladies before, you know, (laughs) the world shut down. So, yes, it has been so cool, all the different connections. It's been so cool. So let's talk about the world shutting down and you writing books, you know. (laughs) So what's it like to write in the pandemic, first of all? Um, What's your self-care? I know, Sky, you do some good self-care around fitness. So talk Mm -hmm. to us about that, too. So. Um, well, for me, uh, self-care has looked like a lot of (laughs) studying and learning to do new things, writing and connecting with people in every way that I can. Mm -hmm. Um, I've started a new business ability. It's personal training and personal development. Um, but really just trying to like make the most of the time and find like peace in the stillness. Um, you know, that and like good whiskey. (laughs) (laughs) There's that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Th- I, um, Sky actually, when we were in Nashville, taught me how to drink whiskey properly. So now I know how to do that in case I'm ever in a situation where I need to drink whiskey. So thank you, Sky. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> um, so I guess like, so for me, I really used writing as an escape. Like all of last year, I feel like that was just a way to distract myself. And I wrote a lot. And I wrote, um, I think I ended up writing like four manuscripts last year, which it's, for me is a lot. I know other people can crank one out like once a month or something, which is insane. And that's amazing. I'm not like that. But like for me, that was my way of coping with a world that just sucked. And there was no end in sight for a really long time. And there still kind of isn't now, at least a definitive end. Um, but I, I also go hiking because I live in an area where there's a lot of hiking um, available, which is really nice. And that's always kind of like a reset for me when I need to get away, but in a safe way away from people. Um, yeah, so for me, that has really helped. Four is a lot and I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, the I'm only impressed book, too. <laughs> I'm really? like, dang, okay. Um, I have not been, I, I, I've written some nonfiction articles uh, and published mm-hmm. them on Medium and done a few different things with that. But our book is the book that I have written this year. Um, mm-hmm. I have plenty of other books in the, in the Auntie Bell series that are on backlog and I, I'm looking towards 2021 and 2022 for those. But our um, Sips and Strokes was the only, only actual book, fictional book I wrote this year. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think it's just, I think people are coping in different ways. Like some people can write and produce a lot and other people are like, I'm struggling. Like, you know, whether it's like, and there's different phases of the pandemic. We went, we're celebrating a year, but like a year ago, we were like an anxiety producing, like, you know, like it felt like the world was going to end. And so Mm -hmm. let alone, you're going to have the concentration to be like, okay, producing like happily after, you know? And then just going through the motions of things, like the different ways. And so it's a lot. Yeah, it, it is. And it is interesting to see how people have made their way through and mm-hmm. really like survived and thrived and maybe in ways that they didn't even realize at first. So, yeah. Yeah. So what was the process like writing together? Did you switch chapters? How, was, how did that happen? <laughs> Well, <laughs> Sarah, you want to? <laughs> um, yeah, so I feel like we um, we had wanted to write something together for a while, but it's just like, you know, mm-hmm. I've got busy. We finally found a time last year. I think it was in the summer where we could like brainstorm and actually talk seriously about it. So I feel like we bounced a couple ideas off of each other via email and then we got hopped on the phone and actually fleshed one out. And then we um so we did a dual perspective for sips and strokes Mm -hmm. Um, main character the female main character lily i wrote her pov and sky wrote the male main character's pov calder 
And so we just alternated chapters that way. And I feel like we, so we, um, we would talk on the phone a lot. Like we would talk on the phone and plan, you know, two ish, two to three, maybe four chapters at a time, just whatever we were feeling. Um, those important points of the, of the story arc and we would write the chapters in a Google doc. And then we would like go back and read what each other wrote and like would do feedback or tweak things. And then we, and then a few days later, we'd hop back on the phone and like do the next chunk. Am I remembering that correctly, Sky? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how we did it because at first we're both pretty well. I mean, Sarah, you know, for, for your, uh, Berkeley work, I know you have to plot, but we're both kind of more naturally what they call pantsers, where you just jump into the story. But writing with someone, it definitely was like, well, we got to have a plan. And we tried to come up with like a whole plan. It was like, no, no, let's just talk about chapter to, like a little bit at a time. So yeah, it would be like two or three chapters, maybe four that we just kind of outline. And then we would, we would just write the swap off point of view. Um, but that was really, really fun. Uh, because a, it was amazing how well it just gelled. And of course, I mean, there was editing to do and everything, but that's every book, but it was like, every time I would get one of your chapters, I'd be like, what's Calder going to do now? Because even though he was my character and I was writing from first person, like I couldn't wait to find out what he'd be doing in this chapter. So it was like so much fun. Like I had, I just really, really enjoyed it. And it did. It just, I thought it clicked beautifully. Like our ideas went well and then it would be cool because like you would have a detail in the chapter and I'd be like, oh my God, that actually is almost the same as something that I put in. So it did, it went really, really nicely. Um, and it was just very, very fun. Yeah, I had a great time. And I honestly, like, I wouldn't, I don't usually want to write with other people. Like I like writing on my own and you're like the only person <laughs> that I want to write with. <laughs> I have never tried doing this. Uh, I have a, another friend who says someday we'll write something together. And I'm like, okay, you know, but again, as Sarah said, we're ladies who get shit done. So uh, no, it was, I can't imagine this going the same. And, you know, I think our writing styles are similar, but very different. I mean, we both have very like, like specific voices, but it just, it was a blast. Like literally it was amazing. Yeah. yeah and I, and it, like, I feel like we got that first draft out in less than two months. Like it did not. Oh my God. Yeah. Very long. yeah. <laughs> no, no. Because I moved around a lot in the summer. So like, I know like where I was, you know, like, so like the location that I was writing at, I wasn't there more than six weeks total, like in that house I was staying in. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say maybe about six weeks it took for to get that done. We blazed yeah. through it. Yeah. Yeah, I was really proud of us. And not to say that, like, we're amazing, but I mean, we kind of are. Like, that's you pretty can awesome. say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this so much. So, tell us about the book because I have not been able to read the book, but it's on my pre order. So, Yay. tell me all about what is the book all about and, like, why we should read it. <laughs> Sarah, do you want to do this? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I'd be happy to. I So Sips and Strokes is a steamy rom-com about a Filipino-American art professor, Lily, and a Scottish Instagram model, Calder. And well, with, hold on. Yeah, yeah. A Scottish Instagram slash romance novel cover model. It's very yes. important. <laughs> very, very niche market there. Yes, he is He is the abs on, on, on your favorite uh, on your favorite latest romance novel. That's part of the whole shtick. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sorry. I didn't mean to gloss over that. <laughs> I feel like Instagram is kind of like the buzzword. So that is what I used to leave with. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, but yes, Calder, who is a um, Instagram model slash romance novel model. Um, and then Lily is forced to attend her ex's wedding. So she recruits Calder, who is the model for her figure drawing class to be her date so she can avoid all those really annoying pitying comments and stares from people and Calder jumps at the chance to be in this fake relationship because he's been dying to land this gig as a spokesman for this very lucrative whiskey brand and in order to do that he needs to show that he's not a playboy anymore he's responsible and relationship minded but of course their attraction and their feelings for each other get in the way of their fake setup. Mm -hmm. I love yep. it. So you got a modern day Fabio, you know, without yes. a <laughs> He is literally like his, his 
like somebody burns on him about being a modern day Fabio. Yes, that is part of it. And I love that like my dude is like the Scottish guy who drinks whiskey and Sarah's got her beautiful art professor, Filipino American lady. And it's just like, it just clicked all over the place. It's, and, and obviously like I wrote Lily's POV and Sky wrote Calder's POV because like, I feel like our backgrounds more, are more in line with this. <laughs> So it would have been weird if I was trying to write a Scottish guy. I don't know. <laughs> so how do you evolve your characters? Like, did you brainstorm together? Did you just realize, so like, these things we're going to include? Did you do anything similar? Like, they came to you? What was the process like for the character development? That's a really good question. I feel like yeah. that seems pretty organically when we were brainstorming just the premise of the book. Um, I think when we decided that we wanted it to be like, like a wedding was sort of one of the big, um, big events in this book. And so I think we knew what we wanted to have happen to get them there. We knew the kind of characters that we wanted to set in the context of, okay, it's an ex's wedding. Who the hell wants to go to their ex's wedding? Nobody. So you're probably really like upset. And Lily is kind of um, she's like a people pleaser pushover in a way. Mm -hmm. So she wants to make people happy and she doesn't want to rock the boat. And you can totally see how somebody like that would get roped into going to something that would suck, like your ex's wedding. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Sky, do you remember? What do you recall? I remember that. I remember the whole idea that we really liked was that through the relationship, the fake dating slash feelings, he was encouraging her to like, step into her power and say what she wanted and like name her desires both like in a in a steamy way but also in like a practical way and helping her to be less of a doormat just by the way he responded to her I remember he was supposed to be like a playboy and then we had the model piece going so it was like he was going to be like this Instagram sensation and then I think I remember it was kind of late in the game that like I, I think like it came to me that he should be the modern day Fabio and it like cracked me up the idea of like having a romance novel with this guy in it so I threw that part in but like he was very much like we were trying to decide how much of a player he was and things like that and we really didn't like play up on that we really focused on the whole idea of him trying to sort of be about like the art of his modeling but not like in a stuffy way just in like a, a little bit less than a I guess kind of basic way um but I definitely remember it was we wanted this sort of doormat woman who really stepped into her 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 shine, I guess I would say. I love this. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. <laughs> you have me a fake relationship. So any type of fake <laughs> relationship is like I'm trash. I'm like just the whole process of like they're not supposed to like each other. But you know, they're going to get feelings at the end. And you're like for the <laughs> two, you know, so. Somebody that. posted on the cover reveal the other day uh, the word fomance. And oh, yeah. I know I'm like behind. I must be behind, but I thought I was like, oh my God, this is my new favorite word, fomance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's okay. Yes, that's yeah. what it is. You know, like a fomance is like, you know, like fake relationship, fake engagement, like any type of like you're not supposed to. And it gives you forced proximity, like they have to be together at certain events. So mm -hmm. you have the opportunity for them to just do. And if you have them to hate each other or they they're sort of don't know each other, you're like getting to know. It's like the perfect segue character arc. So I love this. So speaking of tropes, what is your favorite trip to read and what is your favorite trope to write? Right. Hmm. I, it's just going to be enemies to lovers. Like, I feel like I'm, a, you know, that's just my, that's my thing all the way. One of my first, and Laura, we may have talked about this in our first uh, podcast uh, interview together. Mm -hmm. Beautiful Bastard was like one of my gateways. So like the hate to love in that book is just like, yes. So that would definitely be mine. Probably to read and to write because I've basically got two already out rivals but then like nemesis is definitely enemies 
love this. Yeah, I love the banter of enemies lovers, like the chemistry, mm-hmm. like you're not supposed to like each other, but you know they're gonna end up in bed together. Yep. <laughs> you know? Anything yeah. where it's like, no, we shouldn't, but yes, we're going to. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna bone. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm a huge like obviously no surprise there, but I love enemies lovers too. It's my favorite trope, probably to read and write. Um I should probably start branching out to more tropes though (laughs) if I want to be a um, more well-rounded romance author. I also, you know what though, by writing the fake relationship trope has made me really like that a lot. Mm -hmm. And now I think I have a new found or a new, newly renewed, newly renewed, that's redundant, love for um, fake relationships because it's just so I mean, like you said, Laura, there's just something like delicious about mm-hmm. like, okay, well, you're not supposed to, it's just a setup. We're just being like professionals, but no, you're, it's going to eventually end up with the two of them in bed and it's going to be super hot and they're gonna get all mushy gushy feelings for each other. And that's like the best part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm trash for a fake relationship. Merch and convenience when they have to marry and they're not supposed to marry in Vegas is another one. Like... <laughs> you know they're like I don't know we just got more Vegas and they're like I guess we have to do this together it just yep puts it together you know yes so, I love this and um, so let's see where can we buy the book oh on Amazon Amazon yes uh we're not going to be on Kindle Unlimited at this time Mm-hmm. But Amazon is our main platform for now. We'll tr- we're going to try to take it wide, but just for the launch, we want to focus. Um, so pre-orders are live for the uh, on Amazon, and the paperback will be available on release day. You can't pre-order a paperback, but uh, it will be also available in that format. And release day is April 20th, so mark that on your calendars if you haven't already, and add it to your Goodreads TBR, because that's always really fun to see. I mean, I get really excited about books that are coming out and I add them to my Goodreads TBR. Mm-hmm. I'm like, a million. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I think it isn't Goodreads sends you an email when, it, when the book comes live and it's like, congratulations, your book and your TBR is live. <laughs> so <laughs> a reminder, like, please add it so you can be reminded. And we're like, okay, buy it. Although yes. you can just pre-order it and then midnight or 9 p.m., depending on where you live, it comes live in your Kindle and you can start reading it right away. Very true. Yeah, that's like the best part of pre-ordering something on Kindle, I think. It's like, if you live on the West Coast like me, like you're waiting for literally everything to happen. And then <laughs> by surprise, sometimes you get on at nine o'clock, like you said, you get like a brand new book, you're like, yay. Or maybe that's <laughs> No, it is. It's a, I get it. I love it now. That was a, that was a yeah. gift of moving just to Chicago. Is that I get it an hour early because I was waiting for another book and I was like, when am I going to get it? And I asked my West Coast friends and they were like, you get it. I get it at nine. I'm like, that means I get it at 11. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a gift of living in a different time zone that's not Eastern. So mm-hmm. I love this. So tell us where you can find you online. You can find us on Instagram at quick and dirty romance. That is our podcast. Um, we try to do bi-weekly, but uh, quick and dirty romance is our podcast. And so that's our handle on Instagram and on Twitter. We are at quick and dirty rom on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, all the things I am writer sky McD. Yes. Sarah. Yeah. And I am also on Twitter and Instagram. I am at author Sarah S and you can find me on those. And obviously Sky and I are really interactive and social. So please come say hi to us, chat with us. We love hearing from, from everybody about anything. So please come talk. Yes. <laughs> I love this. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Sky, for being in the show. Thank you, Laura. So, so nice to see both of you tonight. Yeah, it was so fun to chat with you both. And thank you, Laura, for having us on your show. I love this. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For book recommendations, author interview archives, and other fun book resources and tips, please visit watchreadnextblog.com. The Watch Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Network. To discover new shows to listen and love, please visit frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.